Okay, you know, today I thought I'd do something a bit different. I'm going to show you a little town in the Catalan Pyrenees. I visited with my family that's not very far from where I live. And I'll be explaining some of its history and just some stuff I found cool in general. So as you can see here, the town is called Estamariu. This is a photo of the town hall. <laughs> well, just the window of the town hall. I I really liked the uh, the symbol of, of the town. I thought it was pretty cool. So just like with all villages, towns, and cities in Europe, this place has been known by many, many a name. Uh, centuries ago, it was known as Stamaritz, which was documented in the year 893. So you can just imagine how long people live have lived in this zone and I mean even if you think before you know any documentation existed uh, people probably lived in the area anyway I've read mentions to the town being referred to as a uh, Stamarise there are also other names mentioned such as Starmari in 819 with the act of consecration of the cathedral of La Seu d'Urgell and later it was known as Estimariu until the name was changed to what it is now, Estimariu, in 1983. The origin of the name of the town is quite speculative. They suspect that it may have come from the Iberian language that was spoken here, which they kind of call Bascoid, which is obviously very similar to what Basque people speak nowadays. Again, it's mostly speculation. You know, a big thing out here are the Romanesque churches, and in Estamariu, there is a really great example. Unfortunately, you had to call for a visit, and I had no mobile coverage up here, because this town is quite far up in the mountains. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not very far away from the actual main road, but, you know, it's up there. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it, it was a big shame because it still retains its original Romanesque paintings on the walls, which are absolutely beautifully amazing. Uh, this church in particular is known as San Vicente de Estamariu, or Saint Vincent of Estamariu. Unfortunately, it fell into disrepair over the centuries, especially in the 20th, when the roof collapsed until in 1999 it was restored to its former glory. Another thing I'd like to mention are the cemeteries in this zone. It's something that I found very interesting. All of the old grave stones and markers, I guess you could call them, face the Cadi mountain range, which is an extremely impressive one at that, as you can see here. Since I've lived in this area, it almost has always drawn my attention to it immediately when, you, when you're kind of surveying the area. And I will try to find a link uh, for more information about this town's Romanesque church. Although it might be in Catalan, so I hope you can read. Now, the other church in town, which I did not manage to <laughs> find the other photo that I took, uh, is uh, the church that you see here. It's it's, it's, it's quite an interesting church, I find. Uh, this one is known as Santa Cecilia de Estamariu, or Saint Cecilia of Estamariu. And uh, this church was actually built many centuries later than the uh, latter one mentioned. It was built in the Baroque style in the 17th century. And it was first dedicated to the Mother of God of Rouge. Now, I don't know much about church canon, but uh, Rouge means rosebush in Catalan, and it is also a pretty common name within Catalonia. Later on, it was dedicated to St. Vincent, as the town's other church kind of fell out of use over the centuries. And of course, later on, it obviously changed to what it is today, Santa Cecilia. A, a little interesting tidbit I'd like to mention is that... At one point, there was a small hermitage within the limits of the town's kind of land, I guess you could say, uh, that was dedicated to Santa Cecilia long ago. 
So the only remains being the building's foundation, which I was unable to find. And now, you know, I'd like to mention some things that I found uh, recorded in documents over the years about the town that I found personally interesting. Uh, the first one, Rouget Bernat, Vice Count of Castelbo, in 1335 granted permanently to the men of Castel de Torres the right of shepherding on the castle of Estamariu's land by means of an annual census. This is interesting to me because it mentions there used to be a castle here, and I honestly didn't see any signs of one, so they must have salvaged the, the stones from the castle later on. And now for the next one. In the study of the vice counts of Castevo, Miret, and Sons, does during the war of Count Mateo of Foch confiscate the latter's property, the tower located in the lands of Estamariu, commonly called the Tower of the Vice Count of Castevo, was given by Gerau of Guimera, curator of the Queen, and by delegation Juan Cadel, Lord of the Castles of Villanova and Orsegel. This is also very interesting to me, as it shows the small wars fought between minor nobles during the years, I would guess, of the Crown of Aragon, as it makes mention of a queen. And the last thing I'd like to mention before going on about my thoughts is uh, the hotels. On the town's website, there's only one posted, which is strange because there are more. Cal Teixido, which offers a rustic experience and has the highest rating of all the places that offer a similar experience in town that I saw. I'll leave you guys a link in the description because they have photos posted of the rooms and such. So that's it for the script. Now I'll just kind of briefly talk about uh, the experience. This place is very clean. A very, very clean town. It has some of the most beautiful houses that I've seen in this area. And they have some really, really nice ones at that. I would absolutely recommend you coming out here and visiting this town, even if it's just for an hour or two. Because, I mean, during the day, it is so tranquil here you'd be amazed you know there's nothing but the sounds of nature in this town and when we went it was in the springtime and i mean the fields were absolutely blooming with flowers man it, it's it, it's beautiful the road getting up here it's not bad okay but it is quite narrow in some spots so if you do drive up here one day just just keep that in mind. Uh, take it slow when you go up and enjoy the uh, incredible view of the valley down below. Uh, one thing that always really fascinated me about this town, this isn't my first time coming here, is the architecture and the building material used for these buildings. In comparison with the towns and villages down in the valleys, uh, these buildings actually use stones obviously from the mountains so they actually have quite a different color than the ones down in the valley below which tend to be more of a gray color now you see down in the valley there are quite a few rivers and a lot of the buildings especially the houses they actually just grabbed a lot of the stones from the rivers the, the large ones at least and uh, made their houses out of that so uh, you're going to see different colors, and down in the valley, the stones on the houses, they're actually going to be a lot more rounded off, obviously, from years of being in the water. Since we're talking about architecture and buildings and the like, it is also worth mentioning the older buildings in town, if you look at the bases of them, a lot of them have actual natural stone protruding from the bases of the houses, so, what that tells me is a lot of the foundations for these old buildings were actually just carved out of the stone of the mountain, which is really fascinating to me, being from the United States. It's not a very typical thing over there. I've never seen it in the U.S. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I'm saying that it's probably few and far between. So, yeah, another really cool thing about well this area in general is the amount of trails and stuff it's a great place for hiking not only just for going out and seeing nature but 
a lot of these trails go off to old buildings, refuges, and things like that. So even abandoned towns, uh, entire abandoned villages, really. So if you're into hiking and stuff, this place is a really good place to go to. I recommend it. I go out hiking a lot of times with my son, and it's a blast. There, there, there's so much stuff to see, and you know, it's just, it's just a great time. And I, I just kind of really want to go back and touch on what I said earlier about the town being very clean. It is, and it's, you can see that the the town hall takes pretty good care of the streets. Uh, the buildings, there, there are some uh, ruinous ones in town, but that's that's kind of normal because the buildings are so old. But the streets themselves are incredibly clean for the zone. And what I mean by that is a lot of these towns in this kind of zone here, uh, Altorje, rely heavily on agricultural production. And what does that mean? Well, in this area, a big thing is, well, cows and dairy pro uh, products and stuff like that. Up in the mountains here, a lot of the times they'll have uh, the barns where the cows go to uh, stay the night or whatever they'll be way kind of on the outskirts of town uh, but even so you know the the people who own the cows they have tractors and such and you know when they go out and manure their fields a lot of the manure gets stuck on the tires of the tractors and they track it in you know in town but uh, that wasn't the case in this town it's it's very very clean and that's something that really has kind of surprised me now, I've already said it, and I'm just going to wrap up now, but I really do highly recommend you coming out here if you can get out here one day. It is a very, very charming place. Uh, the people are quite friendly, and I think you would really enjoy it. It's a great place to disconnect from the rest of the world. So if you come out here, let me know, because it's it's a great place to disconnect from the rest of the world. And... You know, I'd love to hear if, if you guys actually do come out here, you know, so let me know and, and, and share your experience with me. I'd love to hear about it. So I'll see you guys next time.